Hello again, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm Shane Kohler. I'm the creator and founder of The Living Relationship. My fiance and I work together to bring you a conscious approach to dating and relationships so you can have a conscious, loving, and committed lifelong partnership. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe to the channel. Having subscribers helps our channel to grow and makes it easier for us to get this content to people like you. Today, we're going to talk about how you know when someone is right for you. If you're like most people, then you have a few relationships when you look back that yes, you learned from them and yes, you grew from them. But if you knew then what you know now, you would have saved yourself a lot of time and heartache. When you're dating, time is your most valuable resource. And the worst thing you can do is waste time with the wrong people. The truth is that people are always telling you who they are and people are always letting you know what you can expect from them. But you have to know how to look for those things and how to test a new relationship before you go all in with it. In this video, we're sharing with you the exact test that we share with the clients we coach to help them discover who's right for them and who's not so they can quickly move on to the people they really want to get to know. From the very beginning, you want to communicate exactly what you're looking for with the person, exactly what you want. You see, the idea is not to meet somebody, get all in love with them, and then try to make them want what you want. The idea is to find somebody who wants the things that you want. Somebody that you could be on the same page with and you can go into this process with the possibility of creating a life together. So there's nothing you can lose from the very start just telling them, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. If you want to get married, have a family, if you want to have a lifelong partnership, if you want somebody you can grow old with, or whatever your version of that is, or even if it's not that, if it's something else, whatever it is that you really want, whatever you really want, they need to know that. Don't be afraid that you're going to tell them what you want, and then they're not going to want the same thing. That just saves you time. If you tell them what you want, and that scares them away, they're letting you know very early on in the relationship that they're not the ones for you. Think about all the time that saves you in looking for the one you want to meet. If you can on the first date say, I'm looking to get married maybe a year or two years from now. I'm looking to start a family with somebody. I'm looking for a serious commitment. And they say, whoa, 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 I'm just looking for a good time here. If that happens, they have just made it very clear to you that you do not want the same things. And now you can get on with looking for someone who wants the same thing. Don't go into a relationship trying to be somebody you're not trying to get them to like some fake version of you, go into it being who you are and find somebody who says, yes, I like that. I like where you're going. I see myself going to the same place. We could maybe go there together. People have said to us that telling somebody up front that they want a family or a long-term commitment comes off as needy or weak or pathetic. I say it's weak and pathetic not to say it. If you're too ashamed of what you really want to speak it out loud and let people know about it, one, how could you ever expect to actually get it? And two, what does that say about your own sense of worth, your own sense of value in terms of you, if you need to play down what you want in order to please or get someone else attracted to you? The most powerful thing you can do is be clear about what you want in your life, be confident that you're going to have it, and tell everybody that that's what you're looking for so people know. That's the only way that somebody could say, I'm looking for the same thing. So the first piece is to be clear about what you want and to communicate that clearly. The second piece is boundaries. And what we say is to set your boundaries and see who is willing to keep them and who isn't. Somebody who cannot understand and respect your boundaries is revealing that they have a, uh, a lack of emotional maturity that just will never work in a real relationship. 
When somebody shows you that they can respect your boundaries, that means they understand that you're not just somebody who's going to be whoever they want you to be, that you're your own person with your own values, with your own standards, and that if they want a relationship with you, they need to respect that. Setting boundaries is not a negative thing. Setting boundaries, while it might be difficult because you need to sometimes have some challenging conversations around it, is an incredibly positive thing. All healthy relationships have healthy boundaries. And someone who can't have and maintain healthy boundaries can't actually have a healthy relationship. Let's say you told somebody that you're not open to sleeping with them until the fourth or fifth date. And on the third date or the second date, they're trying to pressure you into doing it. What they're revealing is that they don't respect your standards. They don't respect the commitments that you've made to yourself. And therefore, how could they ever really honor you the way you want to be honored in a relationship? Let's say, for example, that you say, I can't stay up late on a weeknight. I need to be in bed by 10 or maybe 11 on a weeknight. I can't be going out. I can't be staying up all night. And then they're sleeping over and they're trying to keep you up when you told them already that you need to go to bed. Or they're trying to get you to go out and have a drink or go out with some friends. Or they're trying to keep you up on the phone. What they're revealing to you is that what you told them that you need is not really that important to them that they would rather have you do whatever they want you to do than actually respect what you know is best for you. Now, I'm not saying the first time they break one of your boundaries, you cut it off with them because all people need practice with each other. But if they are consistently attempting to break your boundaries and you are consistently having to remind them, and when you remind them, they're trying to convince you to not do it, they're showing you that they're more concerned with what they want from you than actually what you need from them in a relationship. And a relationship like that can never work in the long run. So the first one is communication. The second one is boundaries. And the third one is commitment. And what we tell our clients is you should be asking for commitment every step of the way. Now, I don't mean that you're going to ask them to be your boyfriend on a first date. And I don't mean that you're going to ask them to marry you in a month. We're not saying that. But what we're saying is there is an appropriate level of commitment at every stage of the game. And somebody who is moving toward a relationship will be demonstrating that appropriate level of commitment at every step of the game. So let's say before you have even started dating, before you have even met each other in person, if you're texting them, they should be texting back. Like if I send you a text message and you text me back, that is demonstrating that you want a relationship here, that you're on board with the relationship that we're trying to create here. If I'm texting you five, six, seven times and you send me one short response, you're demonstrating that a relationship with me is really not that important to you, that you're operating at a very low level of commitment in this relationship I'm trying to create here. So that to me tells me that you're not bringing the appropriate level of commitment even in the first stage of our relationship. Like the next stage would be that once you start dating, there should be a, a consistent attempt to make plans with each other. When you do make plans, they should keep those plans. They shouldn't be canceling them last minute or constantly rescheduling. When people do that, when they're unwilling to make plans or unwilling to commit, or when they're constantly canceling or rescheduling the plans they make, what they're demonstrating is that other things are more important to them than your relationship. It doesn't mean that every now and then an emergency won't come up, but generally speaking, when something is important to someone, they keep the commitments they make to that thing. Something we see a lot is uh, you'll be maybe texting with a guy or, or chatting on the phone and you'll say something like, well, I'd love to see you this weekend. And they'll say something back like, yeah, let me check in with you on Friday and we'll see what's up. That would be a great time for you to actually ask for some commitment. Like, listen, if you just wait till Friday, I'm probably not going to be around. I have other things going on. But if you want to make a commitment tonight, I'll block off my Friday night and we can go out. That's up to you. I'm just letting you know I'm not going to wait around. 
you're asking them to step in to a higher level of commitment. See if they do that. Ask them to step into that higher level of commitment and see if they do that. You should expect that they'll call you back, that they'll text you back, that they'll call and text you on their own. You should expect that they'll make time to see you and make plans and they'll keep those plans. You should expect that they will put effort into the relationship from day one. If they are interested, if they like you, if they really want a relationship with you, they will try to make it work. And it's okay to ask for that effort, but if you're asking for it and they're not giving it and they're not giving it on their own, they're demonstrating that the relationship really isn't that important to them. So let's review. One, communicate what you want. Be clear about it. Don't take anything less. Two, set your boundaries. Tell them what you need from them. Tell them where the lines are, where you need them to show you respect in the relationship. Give them the opportunity to choose to honor those boundaries and choose to respect you. Three, ask for commitment every step of the way, from the first text to the first date to the first year to moving in together, every step of the way, they should be making the effort and making the commitment in the relationship. And what we say is this, before you ever get too involved with somebody, test these three areas first. This will ensure that you never waste time with the wrong people again. From very early on, you can start to see if somebody is willing to honor you in these three areas. If they're willing to say, yes, I want the same things you do, or I'm at least open to the same things that you are. If they say, yes, I'll honor your boundary. You want to go to bed. You want to wait a little bit for us to sleep together. You have some other boundary. And those are just examples. Any boundary you have is valid. But if they're willing to say, yes, I honor, I respect the fact that you have those boundaries and I want to keep those, they're showing you that you matter to them. If they make the effort, they make the commitment every step of the way and they are consistent with that, they're showing you that you're important. And somebody who does these three things, even early on in a relationship, shows the promise of the kind of relationship that you really want to have. Somebody who will love you, somebody who will care for you, somebody who will be there for you, somebody who could really be a lifelong partner. I have a question for you. How would you like to be part of a community of people who are coming together to learn and grow together around conscious relationships? My fiance and I created a community on Facebook. It's called the Conscious Relationship Community. It's singles, couples, men and women, all coming together to teach each other, to learn from each other, to grow together in terms of having conscious, loving, and committed relationships. We share a lot of exclusive content there. We also do live Q and A's, so you have the opportunity to get your questions answered directly by us. We also offer free opportunities to work with us and uh, courses and things we put on for the community. So it's a great place to be. And if you want to have the kind of love that you've always dreamed about, this is where you should be. I'm going to drop a link below so you can go ahead and uh, request to join that community. Also, if you're in a relationship right now and you're really struggling with, is this person right for you or not? And you'd like to schedule a session with us. I'm going to drop a link below. The first session is absolutely free, and what we'll do is we'll sit down, we'll talk about your situation, we'll discuss some of the programs we offer, and we'll see if anything is a good fit for you. And we're here to help you however we can. So please leave a comment below, let us know what you thought of this. Anything that was particularly helpful, we would love to hear, because that makes it easier for us to create better content to better serve you. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you back here real soon.